Look right here at this rod, man. Here it goes, buddy. Look at that, man. <laughs> I can't get the rod out of the dang rod holder. Buddy, that's a pull, and he's got my back line immediately. Man, that thing is a digging, buddy. Now, I am fishing shallow. And by shallow, 19 feet. That's deep to a lot of you, depending on where you fish. But for me, the depths I normally fish, that's uh well, look at that right there, man. That is a, what I would call a fun size blue. But again, just because I'm fishing 19 feet deep, have about 17 feet of line out when a fish like that destroys your bait. You seen what it done to the rod, man. It had that rod doubled over. I couldn't hardly get it out of the rod holder. It's fun fishing the shallow. Let me get him landed here and I'll tell you what I'm doing for the day. All right. Well, let's bring this devil in and get him untangled. He, as soon as he took off, man, he went right for this other line back here and got all wrapped up in it. That's all right. I'd rather get a tangle and get a nice fish than sit out here all day and not get a bite, you know. But uh, yeah, guys, I'm in a in a creek mouth today. And here when I get this fish undone here in a second, I'm gonna show you on my graph why I'm set up where I am to be able to take advantage of actively feeding fish. Oh, he's about to jump out on me there. I'll get this untangled in a minute. That's what he eat, a skipjack head. Let me get hold of him. This thing is ornery, man. He don't want to calm down. All right. Well, there he is. Nice, fun-size blue to start the morning. All right. Let me let him go. So, again, like I said, I'm uh, fishing at a creek today. I'm at the mouth of it. You can probably see behind me here. I'm still a little foggy. It's early out here this morning. This is a fairly long creek. It's a fairly wide creek doesn't have a lot of depth to it. Out here at the entrance of it, again, I'm 19 feet and it gets progressively shallower as you go back in there. But I'm gonna take my other camera here and show you on my graph the contour. So I'm on the Tennessee River, which is just a series of reservoirs because of all the dams that they've built. And so areas, what you see on the map here, like creeks like this, they look like they're you know really big and wide at this point. But back in the day before they flooded all this, you know, a creek like this was pretty narrow and, and pretty shallow. I mean, even shallower than it is now. So on my graph here, so the creek comes back this way. You got the main channel out here. And you can see these contours that come this way and come this way. So I've got shallower water up here to my right. I've got a little island here that comes out comes out this way that's the shallower water over here to my left and if you see this here this is the old original creek channel that kind of meanders around and out into the main channel so these old creek channels the original creek channel those kind of act as highways for fish that are actively feeding they come out of the main channel they follow those old creek beds all the way back in here to the creeks now once they get in these creeks they'll disperse. You know, they'll go up on the shorelines and, you know, feed on various schools of shad and bluegill and other bait fish up there. So once they get back in the creek, they could be anywhere. Out there in the main channel could be anywhere. But if you look right here, where these two contours come together on each side of me, it creates like a little choke point. And so fish that are working in and out of this creek and vice versa here, they all get funneled through this little area right where that black dot is. That's where I'm anchored down. They all get forced through this small open area. And places like this, I don't care where you're at on any body of water, you get a choke point, you get an area where fish are forced to go through a narrow area, and you got your baits there, you're going to get some fish as the sun pops out to blind me here. First thing when I'm talking to the camera. But anyway, guys, that's what I'm fishing today. I'm going to put in a few hours out here this morning. I had lines in at 7 a.m. 
and my plan is to fish till about between 11 and noon today. I like fishing the morning hours on weekdays like this where I don't have a lot of boat traffic out here. So uh, that was the first fish that I caught. I did release one off a jug on the way up through here this morning that I found struggling. And uh, I've got skipjack for bait today. I've got four rods out, two with head pieces, and two with midsections. And I'm going to get these two lines untangled, man. That fish, thankfully he didn't get too big a tangle here, but he went right for that back rod. And that's just, you know, again, when you suspend them baits like this, 19 feet of water, you got 16, 17 foot of line out. Fish that size are going to fight hard. It's so much fun. So that bait's still in good shape. I'm just going to rehook it here and drop it right back down. You can see the meat in there still good. And I'm going to get it down. I'm going to reel this other one in and check it, make sure the bait didn't get knocked off the hook and all the melee. And then I'm just going to put in, like I said, I'm going to put in a few hours out here this morning and see what all we can catch. Could be blues, could be flatheads. Yeah, that bait there is still good. And I'll go ahead and show you while I got it up here. Just a small body chunk, about palm sized chunk there of skipjack. But again, back in here, could be blues, flatheads, or stripers. We're into May now, even though I'm bundled up like the Michelin man. We've had a cooler than average spring here in East Tennessee. Going to be 70 degrees today, but it's 40 out here, or was when I got out here on the water. That sun's going to heat things up pretty quick, but. Uh, Nevertheless, y'all, that's what I'm doing. That's where I'm at. Now let's catch some more fish. This back rod got hit. Let's watch it go down. There it goes, man. <laughs> oh, no, he's headed back here toward my anchor rope. Oh, let's hope he comes out of that. That's the wrong way, fish. You could have went any direction. You didn't need to go that way. <laughs> and again, I've got my kayak here. It's got spot lock, but I really don't like using spot lock when I'm anchored down in one spot for long periods of time. The noise just drives me insane. It's more of a tool I use when I'm drifting and just want to stop and, and settle on a spot for a few minutes. What we got here? This is going to be another, it's a little bit smaller blue than the last one, but still, still a decent fish here. I'll take it, man. You don't take a big fish when you're suspending with just a few feet of line out, I'm telling you, fish like this can make it a good time. And I'm thankful that this fish come out of that anchor rope. That's a surefire way to lose a fish is getting tied up in that thing. Well, y'all, this one right here is on the border of being front camera worthy. But he ain't getting access today. It's your, a bad day for you, fish. But there he is. He's, you know, smaller fun sizer, I'd say. I'm going to let him go, and I'm going to put me another piece of skipjack on he flung it off the hook so i'll get another piece on and drop it down and we'll see what else comes through here again it could be any species of fish at any time coming through here so i'm gonna get another bait down and be ready for it back rod oh no he's heading back toward that anchor rope too <laughs> well they keep wanting to go that way for him I've actually got one rod out of commission right now because of that. That's another, another borderline fun sizer here. But that last fish, when he went back toward the anchor rope, he got my other line. And he ended up coming out of the anchor rope, which was great. But he brought my other line into it. So now that line back there snagged. I don't want to pull up my anchor to get it. So I've just got three rods out there right now. Which is fine. Hell, that's more than I need anyway. But nevertheless, it ain't the four that I started with. It's just hard, you know, when you get fish this size. They're going to go where they want to go, you know. You, you're kind of at their mercy. It's hard to get control of them with this short of line out and their initial surge. They're just so strong. Okay, time to come in here, Blue Kitty. Yeah, y'all, that's another fun size. Find my pliers here, we'll get this hook out. I think I get this and unhook, I'm finally gonna be able to shed a layer here. 
It's going to warm up quick today, but these mornings right now, they're cold. I'll be glad that it warms up, at least be in the 50s in the mornings, you know. All right, there he is. This one here, he got leeches all over him. I don't know if you can see them there with the light behind me there in the sun, but uh, he's got them little leeches they all over his mouth and his belly there. <laughs> he's probably been in something hunkered down down there and them leeches took advantage. All right, well, I'm going to let him go. You can't hardly see him anyway because I got the daggone sun behind me. Get out of here. The wind, when we first got out here this morning, the, the wind was kind of blowing out of this creek a little bit. And so the kayak's going this way. Now it's kind of shifted. And so the kayak spun around. But again, it's still plenty of time left for me to fish. So there's no telling what's going to work through here in the next two or three hours. And, I'm sitting here waiting and ready when they do, and it's just one of the things that's, I've said it in some other videos, when you set up on spots like this, it's a waiting game, because you just don't know when fish are going to turn on and become active, and if you've got baits sitting right there in the middle of their path when they're going to be swimming through, and they're already active and looking to go feed, it's an easy meal, and you're going to get bit, so anyway, let's put us another bait on, that one there flung it off, of course. We'll put us another chunk on there. I'm going to leave them two headpieces on the front rods for now. And uh, I'm actually, I think when I get this bait on, I'm going to reel them up because I've had some dink taps chewing. And I'm going to take a look at them baits, make sure they're not foul hooked, make sure they're still in good condition. I'm kind of at the, I reloaded on Skipjack a few days ago. So what I've got in my cooler now, what's left, I need to burn through today. And so I'm not going to be too conservative with bait. If those are chewed up at all, if they looking kind of rough, I'll go ahead and switch them out just to burn through what I got. There's our next fish catcher right there. Send it down and reel in my others and just check them. This bait here, it's still in pretty good shape overall. I mean, if I was being conservative on bait, I'd go ahead and leave it down there and probably get another fish on it but I'm gonna just switch it out just because go ahead and get some fresh bait on and you know again just burn through what I got today because whatever I've whatever I've got left at the end of this trip I'm gonna be dumping out anyway so might as well use it I will keep those used pieces like that in the floor of my kayak here so if the bite really turns on and I run out of bait I'll be able to recycle those and use them again, but for now, I'll go ahead and get some new pieces on. See that right there? That's a good looking bait. About to go down and catch us something, too. And again, I ain't fooled. That one there's in the anchor rope, and I'll pull it up when I get ready to leave here today. There's just another headpiece for this front rod. That bait that I reeled up on this one was pretty good shape. I mean, it looks good, but. I'm gonna put this smaller headpiece on just to kind of, well, there's something splashing right there. Um, just to give us the variety. That way now, I'm gonna have a large headpiece, a smaller headpiece, and then this body chunk back here. So we got a variety of cuts, we got different sizes, and we got one here on the anchor rope if one of them wants to eat it too. <laughs> Maybe they'll knock it loose. Got a little something going on on that small headpiece. I don't know if he's just, it's a small fish. I think he may have it. I'm almost going to reel up on him here. Yeah, he's hooked. Yeah. Wrong end of the hook, fish. You little ones need to leave my baits alone now. I'm waiting on the big ones today. Y'all just, y'all just messing up my baits down there. This is easily the smallest one of the morning here. Let's see if I can get there. there we go. Yeah, let me try to get him in the light here best I can. The sun's in a bad position behind me, but this small blue. We'll send him on. Let's take a look at our headpiece. 
I think it's going to be okay. They ain't been down there too long. It's been hit a few times, but overall still good. I'm going to send that one back down. We'll see if we can get another one on it. This rod got thumped. Look at it going down real slow. I wonder if that ain't flathead on there. Let's find out. Maybe a flatty. He hit it like a flatty. We'll see. He ain't gonna be very big. I'm happy to get him. It's been a long break between fish. Probably about two hours now. Nothing going on. Yep, it is. It's a flathead. I knew it. it had that characteristic just thump and then just slowly going over with the rod. This is probably going to be the last fish of the trip. It's a little after 11 now. And like I said, I ain't had nothing going on. In a couple hours, I think this sun, being a bright sunny day, I think it's hurt my chances in this shallow water today. Our water here, you can see it's got a little color to it, but with as high as the sun is in the sky right now, we've probably got good light penetration down there they're at least seeing the shadow of my kayak and usually situations like this i like to fish a little deeper with this kind of water clarity on sunny days but we did get us a small flathead which again unless something bites here before i get my other lines reeled in he's probably going to be the last one of this trip but i'm thankful to get him get out of here buddy do it again when you're bigger all right, y'all, it's 1130. I am headed toward the car. The bite for the last couple of hours has just been dead. Other than that little small flathead that I got there a few minutes ago, I've had nothing going on. No ding taps, no nothing. And I think it's mainly just the conditions. I really, I picked the wrong day to be fishing that spot. I mean, time of year is right. Springtime and a shallower creek like that, you're going to get some bigger fish moving in up in there to feed. But out here today with the sun being high in the sky and our water clarity how it is really not ideal i would have been better off choosing a day where i would have had some cloud cover or some dirtier water or maybe coming out at night you know where you're not going to get all that light penetration down there not have the shadow of the kayak right over my bait so you know it is what it is but i did get some fish out here today and more importantly i hope that i was able to kind of explain how I'm setting up in that area I tried filming my graph. I don't know how it'll show out there, but that's one of the things I think a lot of people struggle with, especially when you're new to catfishing, is understanding how to read a contour map and knowing how fish are going to move along those contours. And, you know, places like that, if you can find the old creek channel, you know, when you come out to a reservoir like this, it's a lot easier if you're in a, a natural river where you can see exactly where the creek dumps into the river channel. You can just eyeball it in that situation. But out here in a reservoir system where all of this was flooded without a graph and without a contour map, you, you have no way of knowing exactly where the old original creek channel dumped into the old original riverbed. And so that's what I'm trying to show today here on on my graph there show you how I set up and how I find that and and position myself so that when fish become active and move through I'm telling you y'all if you can have your baits setting in their path when they move through even on days like today where I don't have any current flow out here I don't have my scent getting dispersed I'm still going to catch some fish because I'm I'm right there in front of them when they come swimming through so hopefully that was helpful to you but Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I got some chores around the house I got to do today. I got to mow. So uh, I'm going to get on out of here and go home and do that. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.